Okay, here we're going to have a look at uh, an example of scaling of drag forces so that we can predict what's going to happen with a large blimp by making some tests on a small model. So we'd like to find out what the drag is on the blimp. We don't want to build one that's 30 meters long. That's enormous. So let's try building one that's 1 meter long. That would mean it would be a 1 30th scale model. Now, we know that when we look at this large blimp, we're going to have to take into account a variety of forces. There might be viscous forces. There might be pressure forces. There might be inertial forces to take into account, how much we're accelerating or decelerating the flow. Certainly, there'll be gravity because the blimp is being held up against gravity. And there might be surface tension forces. So let's go through them one by one. There will be viscous forces. That's going to be important. There'll be pressure forces because as the blimp moves along, there's going to be a high pressure area on the front and a low pressure area on the back. That's part of what produces the drag in addition to the viscous forces on the side. The inertial forces, almost always important as long as there's moving fluid. So as the fluid accelerates to go around the blimp, we're going to need to take that into account. Gravity. Although we've got buoyancy holding up the blimp, the gravitational forces really only show up in a difference in pressure forces between the top and the bottom. Hydrostatic type pressure in the atmosphere. So gravity is not going to turn out to be important in this case. Likewise, we don't have any free surfaces. We don't have small drops or bubbles or things like that. So surface tension forces, I think we're going to be able to safely ignore. So we're interested in the viscous forces, the inertial forces, and the pressure forces that lead to drag. Dimensionless groups that involve that? Well, we've got the Reynolds number. It's equal to the velocity times the length scale divided by the kinematic viscosity. And that's going to link the viscous forces to the inertial forces. Tell us about the relative importance of each one. Also, we're going to have the drag coefficient that's going to include all of the pressure forces and some of the viscous effects of the uh, shear stress along the sides. So we'll have a drag coefficient, usually written C sub D, and it'll be some function of if none of the rest of these are important, it'll definitely depend on the Reynolds number and it'll depend on any other dimensionless groups that are significant in defining this, uh, this blimp. So, for instance, something about the roughness. I would expect that the drag would depend on how rough we made the surface. So if we're going to have a rough surface on our finished blimp, we better reproduce that roughness exactly in our 1 30th scale model if we want to get things to, to work out okay. Now for making this a fairly simple problem, we're only going to think about the steady case. Our prototype blimp, it's moving at 6 meters per second. That's way lower than the speed of sound in air. So we're going to assume that the flow is incompressible. And what that means is that we're not going to have to worry about the Mach number. We've already noted that we have no free surface. So we're not going to have to worry about gravity waves. So the Froude number, we don't care. And likewise, there's no free surface, so there's no surface tension forces. So the Weber number, we don't care. Now usually when we're doing a drag problem like this, we'll already be pretty confident that what we're interested in is Reynolds number, roughness, and their relationship coming together to produce a drag coefficient. And if we're doing a model, well, if we can make the Reynolds number for the model equal to the Reynolds number for the prototype, and if we can make the length scales for the model, so for instance, a roughness over length, for the model equal to the roughness over the length for the prototype and all the other ones that give us geometric similarity, then we expect that we'll wind up with the drag coefficient 
for the model equal to the drag coefficient for the prototype. If we measure the drag forces on the model, we should be able to predict the drag forces on the prototype. So let's look at our prototype. The velocity of the prototype is 6 meters per second. The length scale for the prototype is 30 meters. If it's a 1 30th scale model, 1 30th the size, then the length of the prototype divided by the length of the model will be equal to 30. Now let's set up our Reynolds number similarity. The velocity for the model times the length for the model divided by the kinematic viscosity for the model must be equal to the velocity for the prototype times the length for the prototype times the divided by the kinematic viscosity for the prototype. Now my first instinct is to just test it in air. So let's rearrange this. The velocity for the model to correspond to our prototype conditions is going to be equal to the kinematic viscosity for the model divided by the kinematic viscosity for the prototype times the length for the prototype divided by the length for the model times the velocity of the prototype. So, if I took air for both the prototype and the model, then that would cancel out because those two properties are the same. I'd have 30 times the velocity of the prototype. So, for a test in air, the model velocity would have to be equal to 1 times 30 times 6 is 180 meters per second. And I would be able to get the same behavior around my small model as I had around the really large one, because I have the same Reynolds number. And if I had geometric similarity, then I'd have the same ratio of all of the lengths. It would be the same size and shape, right down to the roughness height. And I could project my results straight back again, as long as all of my uh, approximations held up. 180 meters per second, though. That's really fast. Speed of sound and air is about 340 meters per second. That would give me a Mach number equal to 180 divided by 340. That's more than half, more than 0.5, significantly greater than 0 0.3. Compressibility is going to be important. So testing in air would turn out to be a bad idea. What to do?